What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to repurpose an old PC and turn it into an awesome home theater PC, otherwise known as an HTPC. Now this is going to work with a desktop or a laptop, it'll work with an old PC or even a new PC if that's something you want to do. What I have here is an old Dell Optiplex 360 I picked up for $15. It has a Core 2 Duo at 2.8 or 2.9 gigahertz. 2 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM and an AMD 6450 512 megabyte GPU. So in order to get this up and running, we're going to be using a standalone Kodi build called Libra Elect. We can run this from a USB drive. We do not need a hard drive inside of our PC. Everything will be stored on the USB and run from the USB. I'm going to be using a 64 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive, but I do recommend using a USB 2.0 drive on these older systems. I have run into compatibility issues with some USB 3.0 drives and these older systems, so USB 2.0 is going to work fine here. If you don't have a USB drive, I'll leave some links in the description to Amazon. They're just going to be the SanDisk Cruiser drives. Personally, I wouldn't use a drive that's under 8 gigabytes, but you could get away with it. When we install add-ons for Kodi, it's going to get bigger and bigger, so I do recommend at least a 16 gigabyte drive, 32 if you can afford it. If you're running this on an older PC like I am, chances are you don't have Wi-Fi built in. If you need wireless, you can pick up a USB dongle like this from Amazon, or you can just use Ethernet. As for navigation in Kodi, you could always use a keyboard or a controller, but I opted to use this 2.4 gigahertz air mouse. Now there's several different styles. I got this one with an Android box that I picked up, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find the link for this exact one here, but I will leave some links down below to ones that I know work. And for the initial setup, you're gonna need a keyboard connected. We can unplug this after we get everything set up and just use our air mouse, but we will need a keyboard to start out so we can enter the boot menu from our BIOS. So here's the PC I'm going to be using, an Optiplex 360. This was released in 2008, so it's around 11 years old now. It's a pretty old unit. There's still a lot that can be done with a computer like this. I've actually made a couple videos on how to install Android and turn one of these into an awesome emulation machine using a standalone operating system called Botocera. But in this video, we're going to be turning one of these into an HTPC. Now, like I mentioned, this will also work on a laptop. And in order to flash our USB drive, we're going to need another machine. This will work with a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine. The devs over at Libra Elect have created an application to easily flash Libra Elect to a USB drive. With all that out of the way, let's move over to my Windows PC and get this USB flashed. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The guys over at Libra Elect have made this super easy to do. First up, I'm just going to check on my USB drive. It's that 64 gigabyte SAN disk. It's formatted NTSF. The application we're gonna download is gonna handle all of this for us so it can be in any format. The next thing you wanna do is head to the link in the description. We're gonna go over to Libra Elect and we're gonna download it. So there's a version for Windows, there's a version for Linux and a version for Mac. This is their flashing tool. So if you're using a Mac, just download this one. If you're using Linux, you can use one of these or Windows. That's what I'm on here. So I'm gonna download the Windows version. I've noticed today as making this video, the download is a bit slow to start, but it should download fairly quickly when it does. There we go. So all I'm going to do is actually take this, place it on my desktop. So now we have the USB creator tool from Libra Elect. We're going to double click. It's going to start the application for us. So like I mentioned, they made this really easy to work with. From the drop down menu in select version, we're going to go for a generic AMD Intel NVIDIA x86 underscore 64. This is going to be for PC. Then we need to download the image. You can check show all, download an older version, but I recommend using their recommended. Click download. It's going to ask you where you want to download it. It's going to go into my downloads folder. You can choose any spot you want. It's going to start the download. Just give it a little while. It's like 230, 240 megabytes. Once it's finished downloading, it's in your downloads folder, but if you leave the application open, it's already going to be selected. The exact one we just downloaded. If not, you can just select file, choose the one that you downloaded. Select your USB stick or SD card. 64 gigabyte sand disk here. I'm going to click right. It's going to give you a warning. Are you sure you want to write the image? Your USB or SD card device will be wiped. Yes, I do. It's going to flash to the USB drive. Our USB is now done. We can go ahead and close all this down. 
You might get a little warning saying that Windows can't read this USB drive. That's totally fine. We don't need it to read it anymore. So now we want to take the USB drive that we just flashed and move over to our old PC that we want to turn into a media center. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I don't have any extra hard drives inside of this machine at all. Everything's going to be running from the USB drive. You can install it to a hard drive if you'd like to. It's going to wipe that drive when you install it. But I want everything just to run from this USB. It's going to work fine this way on an older machine. In order for us to boot the USB on the other machine, we're going to have to enter the boot menu. I'm using a Dell. I press F12 when the unit's starting up. It's going to bring me to the boot menu. I can just choose USB drive. All manufacturers are different entering the boot menu. Some use F2, F4, F5, F8, F11, or delete. So you might want to do some research and find out how to enter the boot menu on your laptop or your desktop. For me, it's F12. So with that out of the way, let's move over to the other PC and get Cody booted up. All right, so I'm back at the PC. I'm going to be setting this up on. I do have a keyboard plugged in for the initial setup. You will need one. And I also have my remote plugged in. So now all we need to do is plug in our USB drive that we flashed Lieber Elect to. We're going to boot the unit up. And like I mentioned, your manufacturer might be different. But to enter the boot menu on this machine, I just press F12 while the computer's starting. I've also actually went into my BIOS and set it up so it only boots from the USB drive when I start the computer up every time. I just disabled all of the other drives and the BIOS. So we're going to boot from this USB. I'll press enter here. I'm going to get my camera set up a little closer to this monitor. So as the system is booting, we want to type in run because we want to run this all from the USB drive. So type in run and press enter. By typing in run, we told Libra Elect that we want to run it all from the USB. So it's going to go ahead and expand the file system on the USB drive. You only need to do this once. Every time we boot up from now on, it's going to boot right into LibreElect or Kodi. This process shouldn't take long at all, and it's automatically going to reboot the computer for us. I do recommend setting up your computer to always boot from the USB drive if this is the only thing you're going to be using this PC for. And since we type run on the initial setup, LibreElect knows that we want to use the USB drive alone, so it's just going to boot right into Kodi from here. And there it is, you now have Libre Elect running from a USB drive. The initial setup is self-explanatory, you can change the language from here. I'm going to be using this remote for the whole video, I'm not even going to touch the keyboard anymore, I can actually unplug it. Click Next, you can change the host name on the system if you want to. It's Libre Elect in case you want to connect with another PC to this unit here. And now we can set up our Wi-Fi. If you're just using Ethernet, it won't prompt you with this at all, but I have a little Wi-Fi dongle plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. Once the initial setup is done, you'll be brought right into Kodi. From here, there's not much going on right now. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you could install a build if you want to, but I'm just going to show you how to install a few add-ons. From the add-on section, we're going to choose Install from Repository. Scroll down to Kodi Add-on Repository. And from here, there's a ton of stuff we can download. There's game add-ons, music add-ons, but I'm worried about the video add-ons. So first thing I usually like to install is YouTube. We're just going to click Install here. Scroll over to OK. It'll also download and install some dependencies that are required to run YouTube. And you can just kind of scroll through here and choose pretty much anything you want. There's a lot of stuff here. This is all legal to use. This is from the Kodi repository. I'm just going to go down the list a little bit and install a few things to demo for you. When you're finished installing your add-ons, just go back to the main add-on menu and they'll be listed here. I'm going to go into HGTV, I guess, and uh, find something to watch. I've actually had really good luck with this Core 2 Duo and this older AMD GPU streaming video. Seems to work fine here. I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. Now, if you go ahead and exit this, it'll kind of run in the background. Just press your main button and then stop. It really depends on what controller you're using. If you want to watch your own videos from, let's say, an external hard drive or another USB drive, it's super easy to do. We're going to go to Movies from the main menu. Enter this menu. We're going to go down to Add Videos. From this menu, we'll click Browse. 
Now you can find your NAS if you have one set up in the house, or you can add your own directory from let's say an external hard drive. I'm just gonna add a directory from this USB drive. I'll just do backup, choose okay, one more time at the bottom, and the last time for okay. Now it's gonna be listed here in your video section, so if you had videos in this folder, all of them will populate. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. It's now up to you to find what you wanna watch. There's a ton of legal add-ons, and if you really wanted to, you could install a full build on here. Tons of tutorials online, just do a quick Google search. There are literally hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube on how to configure different things in Kodi, so if you're stuck somewhere, do a quick Google search. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep up to date with things like this. And like always, thanks for watching.